I'm going to demonstrate on this one. This is well with that. I'm really conserving my uh, this one. <laughs> I'm going to use it for my uh, uh, at least one doll, I guess. And it's very hard to come back. This is the inside, and this is the outside. Okay, same thing. Fold it in half. About that much, and then I might want to do three poles. And then I'll make sure I have one, two, three. And sometimes I do this too. At least I'll do two. And then I clean my wax. And then I'll just do one knot. And then I'll do the same thing. So the the stitch that you're showing us now, mm -hmm. what would you? This is for a doll, then. This would be for some. No, not doll. It would be sewing basket stitching. Yeah. Because the uh, parkas on dolls are smaller. One thing is you have to make sure they're all even. Your stitches all the way, mm -hmm. like you are using a sewing machine. So this is processed pig gut. It's the uh, casings you can get from the supermarket. It's already been cleaned and rinsed by the supermarket and my friend just blew it up and dried it and they cut it out for us just to have something to work with. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking the, a nice uniform piece, cutting off of this, the harder membrane where it connects into the inside of this pig because it's not as pretty as the rest of it and just make it a nice cleaner uniform piece to start making a little basket itch. And what I'm going to do is this folded over stitch that Mary showed us. But instead of using seagrass and sinew, I'm going to be using this nylon thread and some embroidery floss. And they use commercial dyes for their gut baskets and things like that. But those dyes resemble, are the closest ones that resemble the natural stuff we used to use for the green minerals, red alder, and the berry dyes, the blue, that navy blue. And then more recently is like pen inks. So for her stitch, she has an extra tail that she weaves in and it makes it really thick at the end. And that's for the more larger, flatter pieces, but since I'm doing a circle into a basket, my end is going to be pretty blunt because it's going to get reinforced when it's joined as a circle. And this pig gut is still pretty delicate. So I don't want to pull too hard. And what 
the stitches are. And I'm doing like what Mary said, when you want to pull your stitches tight, you don't just pull their object. You pinch your area that you're working on and then you can pull it and you can feel the tension loose, tension tighten up and there's less risk of tearing through your gut. So I'm handling this embroidery floss exactly as the way we handled the seagrass. goes a little faster because I don't have to worry about keeping the floss wet. With this pig, it's very, it still needs a certain amount of moisture because I've been handling these pieces for a couple minutes and it's the moisture of my hands and the, I breathed on it earlier. But for the seal gut, we actually got it wet with water and spit, but it's doesn't lose its moisture just as fast as the seal gut does. I think what it's called is a, it's, I know it's a basting stitch or a running stitch. So you're just going back and forth and it makes this dashed line. And what it is with the embroidery thread to get it into this nice zigzag pattern, you have to remember to come out with your thread underneath it and then you go over it when you make your next stitch. So your stitch needle, it looks like it might be going up and down, but it's actually just a straight line. So you get this curvy effect from the embroidery floss wrapping around that stitch. So I'm just doing what she did, is using the tip of the needle, how she was saying she had, could get two or three stitches at a time. She was weaving back and forth with the needle and then pulling the whole thread through, but I still am working on doing it once and then very quickly just guiding the needle to come out underneath the side of that floss. And then just so it doesn't take too much time, I do two or three stitches and then pull my tension tight. And what I'm also doing to keep it from ripping through the gut is I've got these two fingers anchoring the whole piece and then these two fingers pinching this area where I, I'm pulling the thread from so it doesn't just rip through it. So I'm using my whole hand. Do you think it makes a difference, Eve, the beeswax with the pig? I know how important it is with the sinew and with the thread when you're working with multiple strands, going through the seal, intestine, but. For these delicate little short projects, it doesn't matter for either one, but if you're doing something garment size or even a pouch, you have to get waxed. And so what Elaine told us about when we open the seam, we flatten it, it points down. So the top, this top ribbon of my pig gut will go up here. So I'm not put lining it directly on the edge. I'm lining it so it's half. I don't know if you can see that. So it's half halfway, if you can tell that. Mm -hmm. Same stitch. But now you'll have to worry about grabbing, wrapping around the grass or the floss. 
And I'm not worrying about which side this knot is going on because this is going to be the seam where the basket joins and the edges are going to be tucked inside. So it's a little slippery. That's it. You just have to watch your tension. It helps that the material is transparent. Otherwise, you'll go too close to the edge. Let's see if I can do a couple of them. Oh no. I over poked it on the spot. But that's easy. She said as you go back one or two stitches and use your same holes when you're adding a piece and you just carefully overlap to that broken piece. So that's a patch. On the bigger baskets, you fold the edge over just to give it a little bit of hem, and that helps strengthen the whole circle shape of the bowl, the basket. But these ones are so little, they're just going to stand up by themselves, single layer. I'll start the bottom. Okay, um, splitting. You, this uh, imitation wax thread. Seen you? It's I, I forgot how many this one splits to. Yeah, four four pieces. It splits in half, and then after the half, you take one side and you split it like that. And what I normally do is take it out and then just pull it out like that. Mm. And then after that, thread it through, put a little, I might. I think I'm going to double it. And then I want to make sure I cut off the excess thread. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate using this for the bottom. Here's the oval shape, might be big, so I. Here's the end. This is the middle part of the oval, so I'll thread down and then I'll put this right where above the, like about there, on top of the seam and then I go back up and then I go down and then I try go back up again, in and out, in and out, stitching. I'm making the stitches a little bigger so you could see them on the camera. And you keep going around as you sew in and out. Curve it.
And you just keep going around like that. If I make this one, I may have made the bottom too big, so, but that's just a way to show you how it's done.